Hey all, welcome back. In this episode, I'm fixing up the wipers. This particular story started about 10 years ago, just after I pulled the motor out of the car. I took the whole thing apart, cleaned it up, polished some of the metal bits and then just left it. It all got shoved in a box and forgotten about, until now anyway. First job on the list was cleaning up the body parts, again. Then they all got sprayed with primer. And painted. The TR7 uses the same Lucas cable arrangement you'll see on pretty much all British cars of the era. This worked alright, but it could probably do with some cleaning up at least. The wheel boxes are a bit gummed up as well. So as is my usual habit, I clean the whole lot up on the wire wheel. The shafts are a bit corroded, but they'll be fine. A bit of brake cleaner freed them up nicely. The cable just needed a good clean to get rid of the old grease. And then it's back on the wire wheel again. Then it all got a coat of paint. Remember when I said I shoved all the bits in a box? Yeah, this is what I meant. Guess I'll just have to figure out how this lot goes together. Good job I enjoy puzzles. To be fair, there's not a whole lot to it. For some reason, Triumph used the Lucas 16W motor in the 7, rather than the 14W that British Leyland fitted to pretty much everything else. This park switch is pretty much unattainable now, and it's also broken. Apart from the fact it's broken in half, the pin on the switch is bent, which means it keeps sticking in the housing. I thought about modifying the more common clip-on switch to fit, but I thought I'd have a go at repairing this one first. I should at least be able to glue the housing back together easily enough. These brushes aren't available anymore either. 
The brushes for the 14WR though, so I'll make do with this. They're a little different, and honestly the best thing to do would have been to solder some new wires in, but 10 year ago me went and lost the springs. Oh well, new brushes aren't a bad idea anyway. So I desoldered the old wires. And cleaned up the contacts. If I could just replace this with a new switch I would, but I can't so I'll make do with this. It should be fine. I pulled the pin out and stuck it in some hot water to soften it up. Then spent some time bending it straight again. It's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better. It works as it should anyway. The first job was to wire up the new brushes. I was a bit worried about the red wire not being long enough, but it was actually just about fine. But because I was worrying about that too much, I went and cut the yellow wire too short instead. So I soldered the wires to the switch. And then fitted the brushes properly. The brushes for the 14W sit at a different height to the 16, so I just had to bodge it with the spacers. And that's all fitted. Here you can see how they're different, but with the spacers it all works fine. Here was about the moment I realised I'd cut the yellow wire too short. And so I patched in a bit more wire. I made a mess of the insulation, but it all works fine. So I fitted the switch. Plenty of room to move about now. Then I greased up the bushings and fitted the armature. Then the cover went on. making sure no wires got caught. And then it was bolted in place. The gear wheel was next. And then I took it out to the workshop for a test. You'll see more of that wiring in a future video, don't worry.
The wiper switch seems a bit sticky, but the motor itself works just fine. So I'll put the rest of it together properly. and greased it all up. The park switch was then glued together. These bits are pretty much dead. The mounting pad's easily replaced, the bracket not so much. I looked everywhere for a new rubber pad. In the end I bought one for a 14W motor, just so I could scavenge the rubber from it. The bracket got cleaned up and polished. And it came out really well. I was surprised. I was ready to break out the zinc plating git again, but I didn't even need to. So I started fitting it all to the car. As I was fitting it though, I realised my awful wiring bodge would be staring me in the face every time I opened the bonnet. So, off it came again. The switch came off. And I fixed it properly. I even used the proper colour heat shrink. While I had the motor off, I patched up the paint that had chipped off. It's not a perfect repair, but I really didn't want to have to strip the whole thing down and repaint it. I have standards, but I also have limits. So the motor went back in again. I gave the cable a light coating of lithium grease. And the wheelbox has got some oil as well.
Then it all got fitted to the car. Just loosely for now, I'll have to take this apart again when the windscreen goes in. On reflection, it would have been easier if I put this all together before I fitted it to the car, but live and learn. Next up was the washer system. I started with the washer bottle, it's pretty grotty and a bit yellowed. So it got a wash first. It's a lot better but it's still pretty yellow. I wanted to have a go at whitening it just a little bit. So I tried scrubbing it with some bleach to start with. But that really didn't do anything. I've seen good things about Retrobrite, so I thought I'd give that a go, see if that would do anything on this. I sort of made up my own version. I made up a paste and then rubbed it over the top of the bottle. The retro broke recipe really needs sunlight. Trouble is, this is British summertime. I think the sun's over there somewhere. But I left it outside for a few hours anyway. But when it came back to it, it wasn't really any different. So that was a fail. Worth a try though. I then tried leaving the bottle soaking in hydrogen peroxide for a few hours, but that didn't help either. Before I gave up on the chemicals, I tried soaking it in the OxyClean and some warm water. Still no dice though. As a last ditch effort, I tried sanding it down. Even though I rubbed down a lot of the surface, it was still yellow. I think this is more than just on the surface. So, I think I'll just have to accept that this is 45 year old plastic and it's never going to look new again. I'll just have to live with it, it's not actually that bad. So back on the car, I fitted the washer pump. Or tried to at least. Even though this was sold to me as the right part for the TR7, it doesn't actually fit. It's a simple enough fix, but it's annoying that I had to do it anyway. So that got fitted properly. I was kind of wishing I'd done this before fitting the motor. It's kind of tight fit in there. then the washer hose went in. It runs along the inside of the wing. I tried to get it to go over the wheel arch but couldn't make it go that way. So in the end I had to poke a bit of tubing right from the front of the car, tie the hose to it and then pull it all through. That did the job though. The last piece of the puzzle is the hose from the bottle to the pump. 
This is old aquarium hose. It did the job, but I'll replace it with something new now. Then the non-return valve got fitted, and that's everything done. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next video. See ya!